Greetings, I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I have been asked to, to share my story about how I was deceived to believe that I have an ancestral calling or I have ubizo, what we call in my language, that I'm called by ancestors to be a Sangoma. So this journey, briefly, before I get to that, I grew up in a family where we were doing Christianity, like going to church, serving God, but also um, acknowledging and worshipping our ancestors. I would say worship our ancestors because when you go to the crawl, we'll say, Siangula, we worship, and then we'll recite our, our clean name. So I grew up in that kind of a family that we're doing both. Um, to an extent that I, I grew up being normal for me to actually go and consult the Sangomas that they are speaking on my behalf to my dead uh, relatives that they will seek for information from them and speak it to me. And sometimes when I even go to these people, they, they will do enchantment that we don't even understand that the language that they are speaking. But they were saying that they are speaking on our behalf to the ancestor. Then the ancestor will come back and talk to you. Uh, so I grew up in that kind of environment, but I can say, uh, okay, even when I was growing up, I, I, I used to see things and they will happen. So as I was consulting these Sangomas for different issues, because it was normal for me to consult the Sangomas, I would be told that um, shope, you have a calling, we have the gift of ancestors in you. So I grew up knowing that I have this gift and sometimes I'll pray about things. I mean, I will dream about things and they will literally happen. So for me, there was nothing wrong. But now my breaking point or when something started now to wake me up to say, no, there is something wrong here. Actually, I will even slaughter. My breaking point actually was I slaughtered a cow giving to my past on uh, grandparents. But things had to get from bed to worse after that month. I was like, no, there is something wrong here. There is, a, there is something wrong here. There is a gap. There is something that I'm missing. Why things are getting from bad to worse? So as I was, as now as, as I was going closer to God, there was a time now when I accepted the call for ministry. That's, what, that's when actually hell broke loose. Because now when I started to accept the call for ministry, I, I, I that's when, I, I already shared about that. That's when now, the, my door was being opened. So actually I was sitting with a, with a demon for the whole year in my house. Then I was like, no. Usually the first thing that came to my mind was like, let me go to the people that I'm usually... I, I was just, I'll just do that normal prayer. You know that 10 minutes prayer to say, God help me, what is happening on my door? But the person I was believing, believing it was actually these people. So I went to seek the Sangomas for solution. I went to different people. I paid thousands of rand. I would pay a lot of money that they, they, I get a solution and I'll come back. Nothing was happening. Nothing was changing. Because you know what the enemy does is that he, want, he, 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 always, he will always want a sacrifice. He will always want that the altar, that there be sacrifice in the altar. So as, as, I was, as I was having this demon in my house, I was like, God, what is happening? And I remember after I've paid thousands of rand, going up and down, paying money, coming back and doing this medicine in my house, doing this ritual. So now this thing of this demon happened immediately after I accepted the call to ministry. Now I started to see my grandfather. I remember I was entering church. He came to church. He, 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 was, he was busy tearing my Bible. I was like, okay. Why are you tearing my Bible? Not knowing before then that it was actually a masquerading spirit. So as I was accepting this call, I was like, God, I remember when I came from one of the last men I went to paying a thousand of, of runs and I, I actually used the, the medicine he gave me. So I believe that it's going to help me. But as I entered my, my bedroom, this verse came to my mind. I think it's in, one, in Psalm 121. That says, uh, look up to the mountains. That's where your help comes from. My help comes from God, who is the creator of heaven and earth. I was like, God, if you are really my help, you are going to help me with what is happening in my life and in my house. 
and I'm not going to be going to anyone. I started to seek God, Bazalani. I started to search the word of God. God, if there can be a demon that I don't see with my naked eye, but is here in my house, which, which means there's a realm that I don't see, but is there. Because remember, the realm of the spirit, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist because we don't see it. It is there, but we don't see. That's why even God said that we must concentrate on what we don't see, because what we don't see is eternal. You mustn't concentrate on what you see, you see because it's temporal. So I see search the word of God. I seek God. I was like, God, you have to show me what is happening. What is this realm that is there? Not knowing actually that the demon which was sent to my, to stay with me in my house, maybe it was, it was, it was ma making me to to distract me not to enter to ministry, not to preach the word of God. So, so I didn't know that actually God, it was a way of him teaching me the spiritual warfare because it is, it was with it that, that demon after it was staying with me after eight months, I remember after I, I spoke that verse to God and I prayed, I took the, the medicine of that man to the dustbin and I have never went to any Sangoma after that. I remember I was having this peace in my heart. You know that peace that surpasses all understanding. The door was continuing to open, but now I was not scared. I will go, I will be able now to open the door and go to the bathroom at night. Something that I, I never used to do. So I will also, I, I, God was now was teaching me, being led by the Spirit, that I must speak to it. I will go in the name of Jesus. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. And sometimes it will immediately be silent as I, I'm, 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 I'm praying over it. So God was teaching me how to take my authority and dominion over the powers of the enemy. Because the word of God said that I have given you power over all the powers of the enemy. You shall trample on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall harm you. So God was teaching me how to take my authority and dominion and speak over demons and cast out demons. And after that, you know, I, 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 I grew in the spirit. I grew in understanding the things of the spirit because God started to reveal things. And now as, a, as, 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 as now this thing of being a Sangoma, I remember I even slaughtered a cow for them. I paid a lot of money, you know, the whole cow slaughtering because I believe that I have to do this sacrifice. I need to continue to do this rituals because what the enemy does is that his kingdom of darkness altar. If there's an ancestral altar, he wanted to be sacrificed. He wanted to be activated. He wanted to be renewed. That's why that will find out that the rituals have to be done regularly in this altar. Sacrifice animal or blood animal need to be done in this altar. Sometimes some of the altars are being renewed by the blood of human being. There must be sacrifice that is being done regularly on these altars. And remember, with the altar of God, God as the altar, he sent us a sacrifice. The, 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 Jesus Christ with his own blood, not the blood of animals. He became our sacrifice. He was hanged on a tree and he became our sacrifice. And remember that this Jesus Christ, he is God. Because the word of God said that in the beginning there was the word, the word was with God, the word is God, and the word became flesh. Which means Jesus Christ is God that became flesh. And God, because he loved us so much that he didn't want us to, to, to he didn't want to judge us because of our sins he sent his son to die for us with his blood that our sins will be forgiven that we we shall get our redemption that we we shall receive our salvation because now after the blood sacrifice of our lord jesus christ that was what that was done there is no more sacrifice that we have to do that's why as believers we no longer pray any sacrifice like we are no longer slaughtering any things because the blood of jesus was enough the price that was paid by the blood of jesus christ was enough so we no longer do any sacrifice but the altars of the kingdom of darkness they continue to be sacrificed they have to be renewed by the blood there must always be a sacrifice that is being done on that on those altars so as i was seeking god now i was like okay and and i'm not someone who, who usually dream, who dream about my dead people but i remember there was this, there were one times so I, I was dreaming about my dead relatives they were saying that they are hungry I must give them food and obviously when i go to my family they were saying that we must give them something, we must slaughter, not knowing that I was feeding the altar of kingdom of darkness, not knowing. So, and now as I tried to seek God about this thing, and now God started to reveal his word. He started to, to, to show me the word. He started to give me spiritual illumination because Barcelona were perishing because we lack knowledge. That's why God has said in his word, we, we only spirit, only true spiritual knowledge can they just be delivered so when we're having spiritual illumination as long as our heart are darkened as long as our, our our hearts are blinded we shall never we shall never walk in spiritual illumination and knowledge of god but once we we, we receive spiritual knowledge that's only can we be delivered god said now to speak to me he actually showed me his way that 
You, you have been worshipping other gods in your family. <laughs> we have been worshipping idols. Because the word of God said that we must have no other gods beside me. I am a jealous God. But I found myself in my family that I was worshipping other gods, believing that I should be worshipping them together with God. God is not, is not God that we should be mixing or sharing him. He's only God. He's the only true God. He's the only omnipotent and omnipresent God by himself. He's the all-powerful God by himself. He's the God Almighty. He's the, he's the king of kings alone he's the king of glory alone but i found myself doing both drinking from the cup of the demon and drinking from the cup of god and the word of god said that we can't sit in the table of the of the kingdom of darkness and sit in the king in the table of god so I thought I was worshiping my ancestors, knowing, not knowing that as per the word of God, the word of God said that our our loved ones, they when they've departed, they, their heat is no longer there. They, they are, um, everything, their emotion, whatever they were doing is no longer here. He said that they no longer have anything any part under the sun so myself i assume that they are my mediator between god and me not knowing that the only mediator between us and god is our lord jesus christ there's no other mediator for us to go to god the true god we can only go through his son jesus christ there is no other mediator and and the word of god said that why in i think it's in isaiah 8 verse 19 let me actually read the scripture isaiah 8 is isaiah Chapter 8, verse 19, yes. When the people say to you, consult the mediums, the diviners, and the soothsayers who chip and whisper and mutter, the mediums who try to talk to the dead, should not a people consult their God? Should they, not, should they consult the dead on behalf of the living? So I, I, I was, as myself was worshipping Believing that I'm worshipping the ancestors, obviously, it was a deception and the lie of the enemy. God is saying in his word, should, should, the, should, the, should, the, should the people consult the dead on behalf of the living? Because our God is alive. He is seated on the throne. He rules and he reigns forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, after he was resurrected by God, by the resurrection power of God that is living inside of us now, he is seated on the right hand of God and he rule and he reign with him forever and shall come back for his people. So I found myself now consulting the dead on behalf of me who is living. God is saying, are we not supposed to consult him as a God? So I found myself now consulting the created, not the creator. Because the, the, our loved ones, they were there. They are a lineage before us. We are thankful for them that they, they lived and, and they are from our bloodline. But when they pass on, they pass on. They no longer have part. But I found myself now worshipping the creator, believing that I'm worshipping my ancestors, but actually deceiving myself because God wants us to worship the creator, not the created. Even as I was going to those diviners, those one who was speaking to the dead on behalf of the living, I, I, I found myself of trusting other men that's why god has said in his word cast is the man who trust who trust on other men not on god so i was trusting those men because sometimes god will allow you to go around the, the world to look for solutions to all his created beings so that up until you, you are exhausted that you don't want to do that anymore you're like god i am here because god sometimes will let, will let us be that we go around we spend money we waste a lot of money thinking that we are looking for solution and god is our solution god is our answer God is our helper. So he made me to go around. I don't know how many sangomas I went to. As I was having that demon in my house, I consulted Bazalwane. My pocket was becoming empty. I was drained. I was frustrated. The demon, this side is not making me to sleep. This side, I'm paying thousand of rand because the cow is needed of a five thousand. I paid a lot of money. And the verse now as God was revealing to do these things to me, the verse came that cast is the man who trust on another man. And I was trusting man. Trusting the created who shall die the other day and not trusting the creator the creator of heaven and earth the one who said that this earth is his first tool was the one i was trusting on the created one and i went to god as god was revealing to me now 
uh, God was revealing to me now because I was like, God, show me what is happening in my family. Because my family, we are doing these rituals, we are doing everything, but there was a calamity after calamity. We are getting accident. It doesn't end a year without any of us getting accident. We there was just this stagnation that people are staying for years in 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 one position. There was that there was just this stagnation. There was just this limitation. There was just this delay and setback and backwardness. And all these spirits were being sponsored by this ancestral altar. And there was also what God revealed to me that there's an anti-marriage in your family. And he revealed to as far as my previous generation that this anti-marriage, that people, if a person goes, they come back, the woman who come to marry to my family, they will either die or they, they will divorce there was not even one who was married and god showed me that there is a there, there is a marriage in the spirit in this family and all these spirits they, Barcelona, they were emanating from the ancestral altar because the enemy will make will will erect that altar in a family to make sure that these evil patterns and the and the and the curses and the cycles continue in this family he will put a strong man when you speak about the strong man we don't speak about a a, a, a natural person he, the, that that strong man is making sure that this evil pattern of poverty in this family continues this evil pattern of stagnation this evil pattern of unemployment this evil pattern of sickness and infirmities continuing that in this family we know that every three years people must die in this family we know that every, people are dying of arthritis people are dying of, of diabetes no one is married in this family they are just all giving kids out of wedlock or in this family the the the, the men of this family before a certain age, age they need to die in this family, there is just this barrenness from every girl to every girl. There is no one who is giving birth. They can even go to get married. They will stay for years without a, 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 a child. Even men, there is just a barrenness. What is the plan of the enemy? The plan of the enemy, when he's erecting these altars, believing that we are worshipping ancestors, he want to he want to manifest his agenda. He want to manifest his cycles and patterns of torment because Barcelona, the enemy came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what he does. He destroys now us through these altars by making sure these patterns continue. He issued these spirits that they continue to torment us. This and they are familiar, what we call familiar spirits, which are which are operating from those altars. Familiar spirits, they know everything about you and this family. They go, they know about the lineage of this family. They have been studying in the spirit about the, the patterns of this family so they know everything that's why it's possible that you can go to a person who's having a spirit of divination and he can give you an accurate accurate uh, word about you why because not 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 the spiritual realm we don't enter it through the holy spirit only so there are spirits that you can access the the realm of the spirit even with the spirit of divination and now these sangomas these people who are, who are practicing di divination they use familiar spirit that's why they'll ask your name they'll ask your clay name they will do those enchantment they enter the spirit using the familiar spirit to connect to your family to connect to your life to connect to your destiny they are using a familiar spirit that's why we think that we say that but but what they are telling me is true it is true but which power which power brought that information to you because that power is not of god a spirit of divination is not of god ancestral spirit is not of god is being put by the enemy to believe that we are worshiping something that is not even there <laughs> because it is not even there our loved ones they, they have passed on but he's deceiving us because he's a deceiver he's a father of all lies he deceives us that we are actually worshiping our ancestors that we have to sacrifice what are we sacrificing to we are sacrificing to his altar to make sure that strong men continue to make sure that evil pattern in your family continue you pop out your money that you don't even have to continue to renew the altar of the kingdom of darkness in your family because you are believing that you are actually worshiping your ancestors and you are not so God had to reveal to me now, and, and I was told as I was growing up that I'm going to be a Sangoma, and, and there was never be a Sangoma in my family. There was never in my lineage from the, from the generations before me, three to four, there was never a person who was a Sangoma in my family. But I was told that I'm going to be a Sangoma. And now after I was searching God, after now I accepted the ministry, that's when I was angering the enemy to say now I am stepping into my purpose. I am stepping into my calling. I am stepping into the ministry that God is, has given me birth for. Because the enemy knew that there is a prophetic gift in me. There is a gift of healing in me. So he wanted to hijack that gift and use it for his kingdom. So that I can ensnare many people. I can deceive and lie to many people using the gift 
gifts which are from God. Because remember, every good and perfect gift is from the Lord. Devil is not the giver of any gift. He doesn't have any gift. He's also a created one. That's why he can't create anything. He uses what God has created. That's why he can be able to snatch a gift from you and use it for his kingdom. Because he can't give you any gift. He's a devil who's a created one. So he snatched gift of people that they, they must think that uh, ancestors, they've given them the gift. No, ancestors can give you a gift. Gift is from God. Gift is from God. So he, he deceived many people by hijacking them, by stealing their gift and use it for his kingdom. So that's what he wanted to do to me. He wanted me to use that healing gift and prophetic gift for him. Now God started to reveal to me that I have given you this gift of prophets, I have given you this piece of healing that I'll give a word of knowledge for, for healing. I'll just pray for someone, the person will say he's healed. He wanted to take that. That is of God. But I thank God that God rescued me before the enemy could use me. Because there are many people who are deceived that they, 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 they are being given gift by ancestors while those gifts are from God. And some, they are not even having any gift. That's why when we when a person is being prayed for deliver, deliverance against the spirit of divination, the person will be seeing false vision before having those divination lies that he prophesied people, he tell people that they are having a rejection, they are having all those things. But then when the person get delivered, he no longer see in the realm of the spirit because there was never any gift. That person was being used by the enemy to ensnare and trap many people with the spirit of divination. But if you, you if we have been deceived to say that you have to accept the call of ancestor and we already you we were really having a gift of God, be it a prophetic gift or deliverance gift or healing gift, then you can be able after you are delivered to operate in your gift through the Holy Spirit because we enter the realm of the Spirit Mazalwane through the power of the Holy Spirit, not any other power, not a spirit of divination, not a spirit of 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 ancestors. You can never be a prophet of God and then you say, I Sangoma. Because Sangomas don't use the spirit of the, of, the, of the living God, the spirit of truth. They are not. They are using a familiar spirit. And the, the spirit of divination need to be casted out. I know there are many people, because for me, I was never in a situation whereby, because the enemy will deceive people to think that the things they were not going well for you, you're not loved at work, uh, others are losing job. Things are just dis being destructive around your life that no, for you must accept this call. Others are being even deceived to say, if we are not accepting this call, we are, go we are going to die and your family is going to die because the enemy is still fear in us. He wants us to operate under the fear because now when you are fearful that if I don't accept this ancestral spirit, my family is going to die. Obvious, what are you going to do? You are going to accept the deception of the devil. He's a deceiver. He will accept that deception. But some, they were even telling me, no, no, I have went to initiation. But things have went worse after I have went to initiation. What must I do? The only simple thing I can tell you is that be set free. The spirit need to be casted out of you. You need to be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. I remember there was this other one who was showing to say, ever since my relative accepted this, the, the, my, the, 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 the husband of my relative, he lost everything. Because this is a destructive spirit, this is a seducing spirit, this is a deceiving spirit. That will, that will, that the aim of the enemy for our families, Bazalwani, is to steal, is to kill, is to destroy, is to deceive us into worshipping him. Because when we are worshipping idols, think that we are worshipping God, we are worshipping the enemy. We are worshiping, we are bowing before him. We are bowing before his demons. We are bowing before, before him. We are not bowing to any ancestor. Our ancestors are not demons, but the ancestors have passed on. So when we are saying that we are doing idol worshipping, we are not actually worshipping them. We are worshipping the kingdom of, we are worshipping the devil himself, masquerading as if we are worshipping our ancestors. That's why even in dreams they will come and will bring our loved ones in our dreams. Why? He is giving us a familiar person that we can be able to believe because he, he is a deceiver who transforms himself as an angel of light. He will make you believe that it's a relative obvious when you see your grandmother or your grandfather coming to you, you will believe that actually I need to do this thing because I have seen my grandmother in my dreams. But it's not your grandmother. It is not your relative. It is a masquerading spirit that the enemy is put into your mind so that you can believe that he is, the, he is, is your grandmother or your grandfather speaking to you or your father or your mother speaking to you. It is not them, Bazalwani. It is the enemy speaking masquerading as those relatives of yours. So as I was starting now to do this thing, and, and remember, I have said that the spirit of divination it give accurate prophets. 
That's why Paul, when they were entering the village there, they were preaching the gospel of God. The girl was having the spirit of divination. She started to prophesy to say, these are the true men of God. They are preaching the true gospel of God. Was that lady lying? She was not lying. She was speaking the truth. But what was she using to enter the realm of the spirit to take that information? She was using a spirit of divination. And she was even uh, the cash cow for the for the the people who have employed because she was a servant they were making money out of her that's why you find out that you go to these people they are making money out of us you have to pay you can't go to a sangoma for free and you, you get consulted it's very rare that they will say that there's no money you need to light their whatever then you must pay that cow you must pay that one you are servicing the altar and that altar is not of god we are servicing the altar so this the, the paul got irritated to understand that he had to rebook and cast the spirit out. But the spirit of divination need to be casted out. The spirit of divination need to be casted out of a person and person be set free from that spirit because it is a spirit and the spirits the devils, we cast them out. So the spirit need to be casted out of a person in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So as I was starting now to seek God about the stagnation of my family and everything that was happening, now I got the spiritual illumination that I am not supposed to worship any idols. And I told my family that I'm not going to be partaking in any rituals anymore. I'm going to only follow God. And I have seen what God has done for me and my family. I'm not going to discuss that here, but I have seen the hand of God in my family when I repented. Because remember now, when I went to God, I spoke to God to say, God, Elijah, when he, he wanted to, to, to address the altars of Baal and with those fake prophets there of Baal, he said that he repaired the altar that was broken. So that's what I did for my family. I repaired the altar of God that was broken in my family in repentance. I ask God, forgive us for the sins that we have done. Forgive us for idol worshipping. Forgive us, God, for serving other God besides you. Because it's a jealous God. I went in repentance. I prayed, Barcelona. I stayed in the pray, play, a place of prayer and fasting for months, for years, praying, God, deliver my family. God, set us free. By your mercy, I invoke the mess of God. I invoke the blood of the, of the Lamb. That let it speak a better word for me. I know that I am under the covenant of the blood animal sacrifice that I have done knowingly. And unknowingly, I have I have done rituals, my my things. I, I have partaken into that those altars. I unknowingly, so the the enemy had a legal right to torment me, because I, 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 I had partaken and I was under that covenant. I released myself from the covenant of that ancestral altar, of that foundational altar of my father's house. I released myself from that altar by the blood of the lamb. I I I said I spring the blood of the lamb. Let it speak a better word for me and silence every other voice. I release myself from every stagnation. I release myself from the lack and delays. And after I address the spirits of stagnation, my my family, th there was just this light. There was just this restoration because Barcelona, there can never be a restoration without a deliverance. And I had to say, God, I'm repairing this altar. Help me. I am coming before you. I'm standing in the gap for myself, for my family. Forgive us for turning our faces away from you. Forgive us for what we have done. And after I have repented to God, Bazalwane, God revealed to me now the altar that was working in my family. He revealed the spirit. He, he, he opened the heavens for me. I could see in detail what was going on. I started to see things of the spirit. But then it was like it's a movie. God started to play a movie. I will see the altars. I will see. He even went to reveal even the... Actually, it didn't reveal only the ancestral altar and things which were happening there, but it revealed that there was also a witch of altar that was being empowered and used, and marine spirits were being used there. He even revealed the marine animals which were being used there. He revealed the people who were sacrificed, my family members who were sacrificed in that altar. He revealed, I repented for my family. Because the word of God says that the curses will come to the third and the fourth generation. But it needs someone who's going to come before God and humble himself for yourself and say, God, I repent for my family. I repented for the killings that we have done. I repented for the idol worshipping. I repented for every witchcraft that we have done. I have never done witchcraft. My parents never done witchcraft. But I repented for the sake of my family because I wanted to be set free from that covenant and that altar. And after I repented, God revealed things to me. Still, things had to change and turn around. And they turn around for good. That's why he even spoke to Gideon and said that, go and uproot the altar of Baal. Because God wanted to, to restore good Gideon and Jude. But he couldn't restore them because there was an altar that was speaking of Baal 
in, in his father's house. There was an Asherah pole because was an altar speaks. That's why even if you can be a born again child of God, if that altar is still speaking, that altar is being serviced, it's still, there are still sacrifices which are being done, that it is active. Even if you are born again, you will continue to be stagnant. You will continue to be under the poverty. You will continue to have infinite and sickness. You will continue to be under lack and limitation. You will continue to live a, a life of failure and defeat. You have to uproot. That's why God sent Paul to God. God sent uh, Gideon to Paul altar to say uproot it. In the morning, when the villagers woke up, the altar of Paul was on the on, on the ground. The walls of our, our foundational altars of our father's house need to be uprooted. We need to pull them down. We need to shake them and silence them in the name of Jesus. The Jericho wall need to collapse, Bazalwan, because why the altar it is speaking and the altar need to be silenced. How do you silence it by uprooting it and pulling it down and then build the altar of God? Because God said to Gideon. I brought these altars and then built my altar. And that's what he did. And what happened after he did that? There was a restoration because now the altar of Baal was silenced. The altar that was sending curses to the nation and to the Gideon family was silenced. So we need to silence the altars. We need to silence these altars. We need to bind the strong men and uproot them. If you have been initiated already, you need to, to go under deliverance. You need to be set free from that spirit. You, for God to restore your life, you need to come to God also in repentance. God, forgive me for, being, for be, believing a deceiving spirit, for de believing a seducing spirit. They then when we are set free, because God who set free, he said, the word of God said that who he is set free is free indeed. He's a deliverer. So after he delivers you, he restores whatever the enemy has taken away from you. He, he restores all the years that the locust has eaten from you. So, so it is a deceiver and is a liar. And many people are even saying that I want to commit suicide because even if I went after initiation, nothing is going. Saints, that's a deceiving spirit. Run away from there. Come to God in repentance. He said that you must approach his throne in confidence and you shall receive his mercy and grace. The grace of God is sufficient for you. Even if you have went for that initiation, if you have went, if you have believed that deceiving spirit, come back to God in confidence. The grace of God is sufficient for you. The mercy of God is waiting for you. He shall forgive you and by the blood of the lamb, he shall cleanse you and purify you and he shall restore you. So I want to say to someone right now who has been deceived, that go and get your deliverance. Pray self-deliverance prayers. Go to God. Seek the face of God. He said, when we seek him with all our heart and our soul, we shall find him. I found him for myself. I found him for my family. I have many testimonies after I have found God. Am I a Sangoma? I will never be a Sangoma. I am the prophetess of God because he wanted to hijack my gift and for his kingdom. Now I am freely using the gift of God without paying any sacrifice. I am not sacrificing any animal because the price that, that is in the blood of Jesus was enough for me. I am operating my gift of healing. I am operating my gift of prophecy. I just kneel down and pray because that's what we do. We just We don't spend any cent. We just kneel down and pray. And God, we use, you, you, you manifest his kingdom to us. So come back from there. Come back from that destruction and come to the light. And when the light of God shines on you, the darkness around you will never comprehend the light of God. So you are the light of the world. And God has said that we can't sit on the table of the, of the kingdom of darkness and his table. God doesn't want us to two-time him. He wants us to only focus on him and only serve him. And we can only do, do that if we're only obeying the principles of God and ab abiding to the commandments of God by serving the only true God and serve no other God and not worship any idols. Because the word of God said that idol worshiping is like a sin of witchcraft. When we worship the idols, when God is looking at us, he, see us, he sees us doing witchcraft. That's how much sin of idol worshiping it is to God. So we are not worshiping any idols, uh, we, which the enemy is masquerading as if we are worshiping our ancestors. We are not the only true God that we worship. And our mediator between us and God is our Lord Jesus Christ. Let you be blessed. And I, I believe that this video will help someone who's under, who's about to go under the deception and the lie of the enemy. Those, those, those whitewashed lies of the enemy, they need to be exposed. We need to expose the lies of the enemy. That people must know the truth. And when they know the truth, the truth shall set them free. And when we are free, we shall be free indeed. Amen.